Super excited. I'm super excited for you guys to hear the information he's got to give to you guys. It's a wonderful program. So without further ado, I want you to I want to welcome CEO and founder of Slider Dynamics, Mr. Scott Dieterman. off the streets that is trying to do this to make some money. So uh, as Anthony said, my name is uh, Scott Dieterman. Um, I've been in the industry for coming up on 35 years now. I started sliding at the age of 16 and started training people at the age of 18. And ever since then, I've been constantly developing and experimenting on ways to make sliding more efficient and safer, also to reduce risk of injury to not only the, the talent that's sliding, but also to the guests for any event that they work. Uh, I've been also fortunate enough to work with other events across the country as well. I've been hired in to train a number of teams, and so that's pretty awesome. And I'm pretty, I'm pretty stoked to, to be able to do something like that and give my knowledge back to the industry. Um, when I decided to think about doing something like this, it was back in 2005 when I, I started thinking about, oh, I wanna do a panel, or I wanna do a, something that I can help train sliders to get better and, and continue to do it for long term. And as of 2019, I said, okay, I'm gonna do this and then the pandemic hit. So it put, me, it, it put it on hold for a little bit, you know what I mean? Um, as far as where I've worked, uh, a big majority of my, uh, my um, experience as talent comes out of knots. I started back there in 1990 and I thought five years I was gonna be done. Little did I know, after five years, when I really, I really started to, to build a quote-unquote haunt career, that's when I moved to um, where my roots are very deep, uh, Ghost Town. Yeah. And, yeah, right? And I ran Ghost Town for about 20 so, or so years, and then I moved into management there, and then I just started managing the zone as well. So, um, now that you guys got a little bit of that information out, I'm gonna, the, the, panel, the panel can't cover everything, so I'm gonna give you guys a crash course on, on some of the stuff that's gonna help you guys if you guys work haunts, or if it's something you wanna do, uh, try it out, you can, type of thing. 
So what I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to start from the very beginning, and the very beginning is before even buying a set of pads and going out there to the rink, strapping up and sliding. It all starts from better sleep patterns, diet, everything like that. Um, as, far as, as far as sleep patterns, I mean, obviously it's tough in this day and age. Everybody's doing their day jobs, but you want to get a solid eight hours of sleep. Solid eight hours of sleep, that's going to help. As far as diet's concerned, um, how many here that do haunts, whatnot, like to eat fast food during the course of the run? Yeah. Okay, so, so, so I, I, I put together like a little, a little guideline for this, and there was one big word that I put in when I wrote fast food, and that big word was nope. Not the movie, but nope. Yeah. So, and what I mean by that, you guys, is everybody's gonna eat fast food. We all understand that, right? But what you wanna do is, especially during the course of the run and at least two or three months leading into the run, you wanna drastically reduce the fast food intake. Ivan, stop making faces. <laughs> you wanna drastically reduce the fast food intake and change it up with other foods that are better for your body to burn as fuel. Simple things like clean proteins, you know? Lean meats, stuff like that. Chicken, lean ground beef, things like that. All those things turn, your body turns into fuel better than fast food with almost no crash. I mean, obviously when your body depletes of energy, then you're gonna crash, but this is gonna help you stabilize through the course of any run you do because anybody here that does a hunt knows that runs are very, very taxing mentally and physically, right? Yes. So, also another thing, Energy drinks. How many people here live on energy drinks during Han? Okay, that's another big one. No. Okay. Here's, and here's the thing. It's not just because you get a crash off of that stuff, but, and this is me doing research too, and me experimenting on myself, is if you take in too many energy drinks, it causes health issues. And that's, that doesn't even tie into just doing Han, but that ties into everyday life. Like, if you're doing a lot of energy drinks, guess what? You're gonna start having high blood pressure and heart problems. So again, I'm not saying completely eliminate it because I know that's impossible, but drastically reduce that. Instead of drinking something like that, why not go out and get some kind of electrolyte drink? Liquid IV, Pedialyte, stuff like that. Everything that's got electrolytes in it to replenish that to help you give energy. If you don't want to do that, straight up water. You always need to hydrate anyway, right? So. <laughs> How many people here at the, at, the, at the end of the night though feel that crash because you guys haven't been properly feeding your fuel, feeding, feeding your body? Okay, so in case you guys haven't known, there's a big chunk here that's a part of the team that I work with on a regular basis. So as we get into the Q&A portion, which we'll do, uh, I'm not gonna make you guys wait till the end either. I'll go through segments and you can ask questions. I'll go to the next segment. Um, they can provide some insight on their experiences of what, of what I've taught them as well, okay? Um, I just wanted to touch a little bit on the diet part because that's pretty important and the sleep pattern. So is there anybody at this point that has questions about that? Not a soul? Okay, that's fine, that's okay. Uh, actually, yeah, Martin? Are there any diets you either recommend or is there some diets you think some people should do? Well, you don't want to take in a diet that's like I said, fast food, nothing too high in, in fat. Uh, you want to you want to be more a little bit more protein rich. Uh, that's gonna turn that's gonna um, burn better in your body. You want to do healthy fats. When I say that, and a good example is avocado. You know, avocado is a good healthy fat, so your body burns that as a cleaner source of fuel. Something like that. Anybody else? Yes. So, talking about sleep schedules, what's your best advice between doing a day job and then a hot? And still getting enough sleep. The best advice I can tell you is your body's gonna find a rhythm, okay? It may take you a week or two to get into that rhythm, but once you do it, you'll feel the difference. What I did when I was telling, I was fortunate enough to have a very early makeup time at three, just before 3.30. So I would get into makeup, get all my gear put on, and then I'd have at least an hour to go and take a nap. You know, so that was great, you know? Um, I know that that's not really the case for a lot of places now because some day jobs you don't get to leave early, right? I was fortunate to have that. Uh, at the end, of, at the end of, a, of a night, 
It's highly recommended that you guys don't go out and party because I know a lot of people do that. Uh, go home, get cleaned up, get some rest for the next day. You know what I mean? Yes. Well, banana is a good source of potassium. Sorry. Yeah. You're, you're allergic to avocado? Okay, that, that was an example. So the best thing you can do, and this is for anybody here, all you have to do is Google healthy fats and it'll give you options, okay? I know almonds are a good source of healthy fat too. So there's another one. I don't know if you like almonds, but yeah. So, see, I, I knew there was gonna be more questions when somebody first asked the first question. Anybody else? Nobody, nobody, nobody? Where? Go ahead. That's a tough one. I would say you gotta consult your doctor. Because I'm, uh, I'm not a physician, so I can only base it off of what I've experienced and been able to work through. So, but with the sleep disorder, I, yeah, that would be one of those things. Just be really forthcoming with your doctor explaining as to what the issue is and what you plan to do. And maybe he can put you on some kind of a cycle. You know what I mean? Anybody else? So, what's your opinion on pre-workouts? <laughs> yeah, here, here's the thing, everything, Rob, here's the thing, I, and I've seen this time and time again, everybody uses pre-workouts, and if you use it excessively, it's an issue, uh, my, my recommendation is, stay away from it, is to stay away from it for, during the haunt run, because I mean, even some of my guys are guilty of it, I've seen people put a scoop of pre-workout in their mouth and take it straight, and I'm like, are you guys insane? So again, that's another thing that could spike health problems on the outside. What I teach is to help you guys stay healthy through the course of your hunt career and be able to finish on your own accord and not because you got injured or you have a health issue. Make sense? Any other questions on that one? Okay, so now we can go to the next uh, phase. And next phase is still before even padding up. Okay, this is all pre-training, uh, pre conditioning, and cross-training. This, this is an extremely important one, guys, and this is gonna help make sure you guys' muscles are in sync for anything you do through the, through the course of the, entire, of the entire season and through the course of the year. So when I say pre-training, that means, it doesn't mean going to the gym and lifting heavy, heavy weights every single day. How many here do that? It's not a bad thing, but I'm, I'm gonna explain as to why. Besides Rob back there filming. <laughs> okay, so when you lift heavy, this is, this is the easiest way to put it for you guys. When you lift heavy, you get big and bulky, right? You get strong, but you get big and bulky, right? So what happens is you, get, you, you turn those muscles into short fiber muscles, which aren't as flexible. So what you need for sliding is you need the long fiber muscles, okay? So you don't want to lift heavy, you want to lift lighter, more reps, with a little more tempo. Uh, what I do, and it's highly, highly beneficial, is about 95% of my workouts are all based off of resistance training and body weight. The other 5% is heavier weights. And that's why I've been able to do this for as long as I have. So, you know, and that's why I can still teach it. And during the course of any, uh, any training sequence I do, any team I train is, before we even pad up, we go through exercise specific to the muscle groups that we use for sliding. It's always good to have a, an overall wellness of the body, but when, when it's a training course, especially when it's leading up to a season, there's times where things are gonna be impacted, so we gotta, we gotta focus on those muscles. And when I say those muscles, I mean everything from the core down to the toes. You guys may think that's weird, right, when I say toes, right? So how many people here, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna touch on that a little bit. How many people here have sore, sometimes have sore toes after a night of haunt from sliding, right? Well, even not sliding, right? And the thing is too, is like when I, when I do these things, every, every person I've trained, when I do certain exercises, like what is this for? What's the purpose of this? Because they don't understand that when you do certain exercises that are out of the ordinary, it plays right into what we do, because let's face it, slider, sliding is not a normal motion, right? It's very odd. So, um, these, like I said, these guys can attest to it, but when we do training camps and everything, we don't, even, we don't even pad up probably for the first hour. 
So we'll go through a, we'll go through a dynamic warm up, and when I say that, I mean we'll do some jogging, do some certain exercises like lunges, side steps, stuff like that. Then we'll get into stretching. Once we do the stretching, then we may pad up or we'll go into more exercises. And a lot of the stuff again, what we do is we do a lot of odd a lot of odd motions depending on what we do. Like every time we get up out of a slide, it's a weird motion doing this, right? So obviously lunges are gonna be good for that, but different angles on how you stand up is gonna really help reduce injury in the major areas, because the major areas that are really prone to getting hurt are the hip flexors, the glutes, the lower back, and the hamstrings. The, the groin too, but the hamstrings tend to be more of an issue. So I know I'm crash coursing through this, you guys, but I just want to get you guys as much information as possible and have you guys have more time to ask questions, okay? So I know I crash course through that, but who's got questions on that side with the exercises? I know there's gotta be questions on that, yes? Is gymnastics a good sport to do if you wanna do fighting? Actually it is, because your muscles are really limber, you're gonna be super flexible, because flexibility is really a really good thing to have when you're sliding. So that's a good question. Anybody else? Yes. Yes, actually I do. Um, there's one that, that, that I do on a regular basis called a butterfly. Basically you sit like Indian style, but you don't bounce. Okay, when you're stretching, that really stretches the groin area. Um, all you do is sit there and push your knees down slowly with your elbows. That, that helps a lot. Uh, there's, there's a multitude, that's a, that's a, that's a pretty in length, uh, in length answer, so if you wanna hang on to that, I, we can talk outside and I can give you a, a more in-depth answer on that. Okay, somebody had a question back there? Oh. Can't see back there. Hi. Hi. What's the best resources to find the best exercises for sharing? Well, for, here's the thing, for sliding, there's not really a, a resource for that if you look it up. Um, it's kind of weird because a lot of the stuff I do, I've come up with in my own head and I put it into effect and I explain it on my, myself first before I use it on anybody that I'm training. Um, you can find some exercises if you Google it, but it's not gonna be specific to sliding. When I, when I do clinics, I give them all that information and I give that to them to carry over when I'm gone. Because when I train teams out of state, I'm obviously not there through the course of the run but I'm always accessible to that, to those teams anytime through the course of the year if they have questions. So that's a good, that's a good question. Anybody else? Yes. Um, what is the good stuff to work on endurance during these times? The biggest thing for endurance, well obviously running is always a good one, but I highly recommend swimming. Uh, that really taxes the cardio, but it also trains every single muscle in the body. So, and that, that would actually reduce the soreness when you go out there and slide because, like if, you, if you've never slid before and you go on to slide and you're doing it for a day, you're gonna feel like you did a thousand squats at the end of that day. You're gonna be sore, you know what I mean? So swimming's a good one, um, running. I, I also do for myself, I haven't done it a lot with a lot of the teams I've done, I'm slowly adding it as uh, hit training. Does, any, does everybody know what hit training is? Yes. Okay, everybody, just for you guys that don't know, <laughs> for those of you guys that don't know, it's high intensity interval training. So, and that, that's a good one. Like, I hate it, but I do it because it's needed. You know what I mean? So, any other questions? You guys are surprising. That's okay though. So, you know, we might even get out of here sooner than you guys want, but that's okay. <laughs> Yes. Uh, yes. Not related to exercise, but what's a good way to find your community? I'm sorry? Not related to exercise, but what's a good way to find your community? You can actually go on Facebook. There's a community there. I mean, you, just, you can do, um, what is that page? It's uh, Haunt Sliders or something like that. Slide Practice Nerds. There you go. Slide Practice Nerds. They're based out here, most of them. Um, you can follow any slider group uh, page that there's out there. Like you, you have, yeah, the, the QM slider team, there's a team in Germany that you can slide to watch. I know that's out of our quote unquote community, but that's a bigger picture globally. So, just so you guys are a little bit aware too, the history of sliding is pretty crazy. When it started back in the late 80s to the early 90s, we started doing this weird thing 
and it was strictly designed for a scare tactic. But then all of a sudden, we started seeing videos of people doing it in Japan. You know, to be, to be a part of something getting started and then all of a sudden you're seeing stuff across the globe is insane. You know, it's kind of cool to see, it's like, dude, we started this and now they're doing this over there. You know, that's, a, that's, that's kind of a cool thing. You know, now, like I said, it's in Germany, Holland, places like that. So, yes? Um, as part of the uh, new water body in ways that are not normal, would the uh, proteins and exercises also help in a general pocket? Yes, it would. It's not specific, just sliding, per se. Um, I use it because it targets certain muscles, but it definitely would, for sure. The biggest thing is you gotta stay limber all the way across the board through the course of the run. And the thing is too is like, there's a lot of people that only wanna do it like two, maybe three months leading into the season, right? If you wanna be proficient at this to the course of your entire haunt career, you gotta do it year round. I know it sounds weird, but I'm, I still slide at least once a week at my local rink, you know? And that's not just because I need to keep my skills sharp for my, my business, it's because it, it's make, it makes sure I reduce my injuries. And you'll hear me say that probably a number of times. Everything I do is designed to reduce injury risk. And I say reduce because it's impossible to eliminate that fact. Because something can happen where you go in for a slide, you step, you stand up, you hit a, a pothole or something, and you roll your ankle. That's not because you weren't, the training wasn't right, it's just the nature of the beast. You know, the scope of the area you work. So, any other questions? Yes. Oh. Sorry, I should have pointed at you. <laughs> um, are there, like, when you say rink, do you just mean like outside skating rink? Yeah, what, where I train is an old outdoor hockey rink, so it's a polished concrete, you know, and so it's pretty slick. Um, nowadays, it's, kind of, it's getting more and more rare. A lot of the ground is, is rougher. But if you can find an outdoor skate rink or something like that, I know a lot of guys, they go to outdoor skate parks, you know, and they skate the, the verts over there and, and they slide on the verts and stuff like that. I'm sure probably all, this, all the people in here that slide have done that. I have. It's fun. You know what I mean? <laughs> that was a good question, too. I like, all the questions are good, but I'm getting some interesting ones. Uh, who, who else had a question? I thought I saw another hand somewhere. No? Okay. Okay, so now we're gonna get into the part of training cycles where you actually pad up. This is, I'm sure, the meat and potatoes that you guys really wanna hear, right? The other stuff, you're kinda of like, eh. Ah. <laughs> so, after, after we get all this other stuff done and the group pads up, it's not go out there and slide bonkers. A couple slides get warmed up and it goes immediately into controlled drills. And when I say that, it's everything designed from Stopping, starting, direction change, uh, being able to bail out. Uh, when I say that is because, think of it this way, you're in a crowded area and you hit a slide and all of a sudden, I guess, changes direction, goes right in front of you, right? So you have to be able to get out of that scenario without making contact. Because the, the number one priority is the safety of the guest. And I know it's, it sounds kind of weird because you always think safety yourself first, right? But in this scenario, especially when you're working for an event, the number one priority is safety to the guest and then yourself. So you do whatever you have to do to, to get out of the way, even if it means you fall on the ground and it looks like who cares, you didn't make contact. So the biggest thing is, I've had this question a lot that has come through my, my Instagram account is how do you stop? <laughs> look at, look at, he's got his finger up, he's one of them. <laughs> so here, here's the thing. There's a lot of people that see what sliding is today, but they don't grasp the concept of what these people have put into it to get to where they are. And the easiest way to explain that is you can't, you gotta learn to crawl before you learn to run. And some people wanna go straight to running, not a good thing. And that's what I, that's, that's why I designed my curriculum for, is to make sure people are trained properly and go through the steps. Because I break everything down to baby steps and we, it's like building blocks from there. So by the time they're, they're out there sliding full speed or they want to jump, they have all the tools they need to get to that point and do it safely. Makes sense, right? What, what we also do, what I also do too, is I do a lot of endurance drills as well. And some of these guys in here that have done some of my clinic can attest to it. It sucks, but it works for them. 
Look at this one right here. She's praying to the gods because she hates it. <laughs> so, um, and the thing is, too, is I try to get creative and make sure that anybody that's doing these drills, they have options to do something that they want to do within the scope of the drill. So when we do endurance drills, it's all based on different types of slide you, you do. Like a lot of people, a lot of people like to just slide by somebody and get a scare, right? So I incorporate that. Sometimes you got to slide through a very tiny gap. I incorporate that. Things like that. The bailout, the bailout too, is a big one. And there's there's multiple ways to do bailouts and rollouts, but that all is in, that's all taught in clinics to make everything again safer, reduce risk to injury. You got that, Ivan? You good? He's gone. <laughs> He's shaking his head over there. <laughs> so all of this stuff is it can be pretty taxing, and sometimes it gets a little bit boring. But anytime. Anytime we do something like this, it's, sliding was meant to be fun, right? So, at the, end of, at the end of a clinic, guess what? You go out there and slide for fun for 15, 20 minutes. You know, you have a good time and play with your friends. That's the biggest thing, you're out there to have a good time. And I want to cater to that, you know? That's why, that's why I do what I do, because I love doing it still, and I've been doing it for this long, and it's pretty awesome, so. Anybody else have any other questions on the training side? Because I know I, I really ran through it. So I know there's got to be some, huh? No? Somebody's chuckling back there. I can't use this mic. Can you guys hear me okay without the mic? No! What? Is this better? I need it for film purposes. I'm sorry, guys. I got a bunch of. Guys, they say they're supporting me, but they're, you know. Let's walk it out, buddy. Can you hear him better now? Uh huh. Yes, we're supporting you, buddy. Love yeah. You. Okay, there's another thing I want to touch on, too, is equipment. So, there's a lot of different, those of you that have seen slider equipment, there's a lot of different types of equipment, whether it be shoes, pads, uh, gloves, all that stuff. There's only one real piece of equipment that's highly recommended, that I, that, that I highly recommend, and that's the pads. The two, the two types of pads that I highly recommend, which are used pretty heavily now, are 187 and Smith. And right now, as far as I know, Smith is completely out of stock in the size you need, so 187 is picking up that slack. Um, the company that's got the best recaps, because you're gonna need those, and that's, that's Highly recommended as well. You get a, you get a pair of pads that have replaceable caps on it. You can put a new one on top of the original. Is is uh, Winnet Seven and Smith? But Winnet Seven's probably got the most durable cap out there. So. Yeah. 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 Sure, Walter. <laughs> also, uh, when you get when you get down to, I'm just going to start from the shoes and work my way up to the gloves. The footwear. The only real thing I recommend is. Um, Go buy, go buy a pair of old steel toe shoes, something like that, two or three sizes bigger than your foot size, and glue that steel toe to the outside of your shoe. I, I, I don't recommend people using Converse or Vans, but I have a lot of friends that use them, and they're great. That's just me, though, um, because those are the type of things that have to be beneficial to the person wearing. It's got to be comfortable for them. Again, sliding is not a, weird, a, a normal thing, so you've got to be as comfortable as possible. I do recommend insoles, though, highly and no matter what shoe you get. I kind of forgot to bring my stuff to show you guys, so my bad. <laughs> Gloves, that's another, that's another uh, scope that needs to be comfort. Some, some people like big, durable, heavyweight gloves, you know, and that's all, that's all well and good. We have no problem with that. I have no problem with that. It's whatever works for them. I'm personally the kind of guy that likes motocross gloves and lightweight with washers and, and to, uh, <laughs> Lightweight fingertips, uh, or, no, or no fingers. So those, those are all variances that you can use. Uh, but one thing I forgot to mention when you go back to pads, some people slide without gaskets underneath. That is gonna really shorten your longevity in sliding. You wear gaskets, that's gonna really help because it absorbs the impact. That's the first thing. Second thing, it helps absorb some of that sweat. And the third thing, it's gonna help keep your pads in place. Because how many in here that slide already have had a pad shift on them when they slide? Sucks, doesn't it? 
Yeah. How many's gotten road rash from that? Without gaskets. Sucks. Me too. Yeah. So. But again, you guys, I wanted to, I wanted to press the fact that injury is a, it was a reduction, not, um, not eliminated, because I'll show you guys right now. I don't know if you can see it. Can you guys see my, my pinky? Oh, yeah. You guys see it? Can you see that? <laughs> The reason, why, the reason why I showed that is because this had nothing to do with the training that I, that I put through myself through. It had everything to do with the fact that a guest changed direction on me and I couldn't get away quick enough. I didn't make contact with her. She stepped on my finger. So I went Mach 2 that way and my finger went Mach 5 that way. Yeah. So ripped the steel right off the tip of my glove. Danger. Danger. Okay, I kinda, I'm kind of liking the peanut gallery in here. It's, it's lightening the mood. <laughs> yeah. I, Whoa. I didn't need to see that. <laughs> We're supporting you, buddy. <laughs> Good game. Good game. Uh, also, too, um, I do want to throw in there, too, that you see a lot of guys that, have, uh, that use sparks. 100% okay. And I've said this to somebody that's in the room. When he's like, hey, you gotta get sparks, and I'm like, not my, not my thing, dude. But that's okay, I think it's great, especially when people put on shows and they have the sparks. It, it, looks, it looks pretty cool, you know? Can we get a demonstration back there? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, give me a minute, you guys. I gotta go back to my notes, make sure I covered everything for you. Because we're, we're only 30 minutes in. Really? And I don't like talking. <laughs> okay. I do want to touch a little bit more, too, on something that I really touched. Huh? There's a question. Who? Mary. Yes? Uh, how do you not hurt your fingers when you're sliding on fingerless gloves? Well, here's the thing. Here, here's the thing. When the people, those of you that do slide without fingers, if you watch them closely, they put their fingers up like this. So they're actually sliding on what's, what's on the palm of their hand, whether it's a puck, or a big steel plate, I think it's nuts. Yeah. But again, if it works for them, it works for them. You know what I mean? That's the good, that's the good thing about it. So. Huh? What? Thanks, Mary, appreciate it. That's all say. I couldn't hear. Thank you, you're the best. Thank you, you're the best. Now you guys made me forget what I was gonna tell you. That's why I have notes. And I was back there observing them while you guys were here waiting for me and I still forgot them. So, um, <laughs> even after, once we start the sequences where everybody's padded up and sliding, it doesn't always go right into the actual sliding itself and the drills. There's a lot of exercises that we do leading up to that. Because there's certain, certain movements that are incorporated into the exercise plans that you can't do without pads. So when people pad up, then we, uh, we do the exercise that way, you know what I mean? So that was, a, that was a big one because that happens almost every day of every training session I do. Okay, I know I got through this pretty quick, but I wanna open the floor to any questions you guys might have. Yes? So as the, the dad of the two up front, do you have advice or suggestions for young people just getting started in this? Baby steps. Where, where did you first see sliding? Okay. Okay, that's, I'm glad you brought them up because they're, they're in the upper echelon. Um, a lot of people understand how much hard work those guys put in and what, they, what they've done to get to that point. And this is where I say a lot of people wanna, wanna go to the running phase before they crawl. So when you see them, use that as inspiration to learn how to slide, but don't try to do what they want to do, what they're doing right away. Take the steps, 
to get through it. You know, learn how to stop, learn control first, and then you build on those blocks from there. Did I hear another question just now? Yes, boot camps. We do do that down here. Um, we haven't done it the past couple of years because the pandemic kind of hit us, and now we're back in season and you know, everything's going crazy. But uh, those of you guys that do live in, down here, uh, for two or three years we ran uh, a Queen Mary Sliders boot camp out here in, um, in Orange County. And we had a, a very big turnout every year for that because people want to come and learn. But one thing I, I do express on everybody that comes in how sore they're going to be. So, I mean, we could have 100 plus people come out and the next week we'll be down to less than half of that. You know, it, it does happen and that's okay. You know, some people will take some time off and come back. But the thing is, if you want to learn, you got to stick to it. You know, you can't, it's, it's all or nothing. If you go, if you go halfway, that's, that's when you're going to start getting hurt. Any other questions? Yes. We are not doing one this year. Yeah. It was something we, we did in the past, but because of the timing, you know, and now we're coming up into season, uh, anybody that's working a haunt is guaranteed they've already been placed in their, their area, so and they're already focused on what they need to do for that event. But normally what we do is we, we'll start in like March or April, and then go once a week all the way up until about late August, early September. Yeah, so you get a, you get a lot of hands-on coaching, and it's spread out over a long period of time instead of impacting into like two or three weeks. So it gives your time, your body a little bit of time to acclimate in between. So, anyone else? Yes, too tall. How long is your uh, slider clinics before a big event? Like in SeaWorld, how long do you train? Thanks for bringing that up. SeaWorld, um, right now, we are on a two, uh, I'm going out there next month to train that team in Florida and we're actually on a two week cycle for them and each, each day is blocked out for six hours. Um, that's the max. Uh, we're, there's gonna be days where we don't go that far, but there's a lot of information that they need to receive because I have returning and new sliders, but everybody's gotta be on the same page by the time they're, they're open and ready to go. So what I do is when I go through a course I get everybody up to speed, and then once they're there, to where I think I need them, then we get, then I get everybody's muscles acclimated to the movements. And that takes a while to do that. And I've, I've, done, that, I've done that with them a couple of years, and there's been times where some of, the, some of the people have been so sore that they had to take a day off. And that, that does happen. But the, the thing is, when that does happen, I help them work through that to get back to square one to start again. That, that is one thing I didn't bring up. So thank you, Trix, for that, because that sparked a memory. Um, <laughs> um, that sparked a memory because I had a couple of people last year out there that were very sore. So I help, I assist them in getting through, whether it's stretches, I teach them how to work those muscles out and, and different things to help them get back to where they can come out and gradually move back into sliding. Even, if, even when they're injured, not just sore, I help them work through that too because considering how long I've been doing this, I've had a ton of injuries in the sense of not so bad to where it completely takes me out, but it, takes, it, it puts me in a position to where I have to dial back a little bit. This is probably the worst injury I've ever had, and I actually worked through that. I went back and taped my, the steel back on my finger and went back to work, even though my whole hand was on fire. <laughs> so, any other questions? Over there. That's fine. Uh, first question, is there going to be some kind of boot camp next year? That is to be determined. Um, you can, I'll give you guys my, uh, my Instagram handle um, after this, and it'll be posted on there when, if and when we start doing that. Um, that was going to be my second question. I was like, what group should like, anyone that has never done something before, what page should they follow so they know that there's going to be one for next year? For that specific boot camp, um, you would want to follow the QM Sliders Instagram um, or mine, slider.dynamics, spelled M-I-X. Um, that's where a lot of that information is going to be posted as well. I, I'll have, I have business cards too for you guys if you guys want to grab one on the way out. That's not a problem. That way you guys can, you guys can reach out to me anytime after this through email or Instagram if you have any questions. Uh, thanks for that question because I wasn't thinking about that. So, Anybody else have any other questions?
Yes. Were you raising your hand? No, you were scratching your This is what I do. Um, say you work a long night, you're a little bit sore. First thing, hydrate, okay? Glass of water, two ibuprofen, that helps a lot before you go to bed. But what you wanna do to be even more proactive in that is leading into an event, you wanna start actually stretching more and taking in a little bit of extra potassium because that really helps reduce cramping and hydration like crazy, like electrolytes, because that's what happens too when your muscles get sore, it's because you get acid, lactic acid buildup. And you know, and your body goes through that dump. So the electro electrolytes will help that. And if you guys have foam rollers, even a tennis ball, that helps. You roll that on the sore muscles. It'll hurt when you're rolling it, but it's gonna feel better after the fact. So, way in the back. What would you think, uh, what would you say is the most important stretch or exercise that every slider should do no matter what? Well, there's multiple. So the first one, groin stretch, uh, quad, uh, hamstring stretch, and a quad stretch. Also, there's a, a weird stretch that, that I have all my guys do. It's to stretch out this, here, let me stand up here so you guys can see it. The hip flexor right here. This part, this part is very prone to, to getting pulled, depending on how you get up. I've pulled it a few times, luckily it wasn't bad, but this area right here, once I've figured out how to stretch it, that, that's been a lifesaver for me. Anyone else? I don't like standing up here. <laughs> can you Anthony. Show, can you show us that stretch? Really? <laughs> there's, 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 there's two ways you could do it, okay? And the funny thing is, when you do this, a lot of people will be like, I don't feel it, but it's actually stretching. So. Here's the thing, he just wants me to, make, wants me to look funny up here. No, I <laughs> okay, so, this is how I do this stretch. Can you guys all see me okay? Yeah. This is how I do this stretch. So, the leg I'm actually stretching is my left one, the one with my knee down, okay? When you sit like this, you keep your posture straight, you roll your glutes forward. When you do that, you'll feel a stretch from your waist down to just above mid thigh. This whole area opens up. And that's, that's a big one, a really big one. Thank you. You're welcome. Love you. you just wanted me to make it look dumb. <laughs> yes. I feel it. <laughs> See what you started, Anthony? Oh, who dared you? That one that's standing next to you? No. Yeah. Okay, so this is the other one. This one's more common, but in my opinion, it doesn't stretch it as good. I'm going to show you. So this is like a... <laughs> This is like a really big, it's like a, it's like a lunge stretch, but what you want to do, same thing, I'm stretching my left hip flexor, okay? So, you're going to do a wide step like this, with your leg down, and when you lean forward like this, watch what my hip does. My hands here, see how I roll to that side? Again, it opens up that hip joint to get more of a stretch on that muscle. I feel it, yeah, I feel it. There you go. Yeah. I'm so glad you guys are lighthearted because this makes it so much easier. Did I have a question right there? Well, if it's, thank God it's not a knee that dislocates. Are you trying to slide? Okay, just checking. <laughs> well, here, here's the thing. I'm not gonna tell somebody to not do something when they wanna do it because they're gonna do it anyway. My doctor used to say that to me. He's like, I'm not gonna tell you to not do it because you're gonna go out and do it anyway. Just be careful. So, here's the thing is that there's two different ways to slide, and one way can completely, completely alleviate the possibility of popping a shoulder out, and that's upright sliding. And when I say that, I mean knees, knees and toes only, because your hands don't touch the ground. But every slider should know how to do both, upright and what I call prone sliding, which is six contact points, your toes, your knees, and your hands. That's, that's probably the safest, most stable way. But once you get to the part where you're more advanced, you can slide however you see fit, and it works. Next question. Yes. That's actually an in-depth question too. Like I would have to physically 
kind of walk you through it. Um, but I, I actually have built two really good exercises to help strengthen the knee joint that I have my guys do now. And you can do it, I, I like to do it with a, a, a low resistance elastic band because you need that for it to be, to work better. But I don't know, if, I guess I gotta stand up here again. So here's, here's one, okay? I'm gonna, do, I'm gonna do this one without an elastic band because there's no way around it. So it's something as simple as this, is if you balance on, your, on one foot, like this, and it's, it, it, and it's a simple slight squat like this. And when you come up, you don't wanna walk out, okay? You wanna come to here and up to here. Now, if you had an elastic band, you put it here and you anchor it to whatever, and it's a slight, I'll stand this way so you guys see it. It's a slight this. This one you wanna go until your leg is straight, but you don't wanna slam into it. Everything has a slow, deliberate motion, okay? Another one too is lateral, inside and outside, like this. I don't know if you guys can see it, like this. Tension coming from the inside, then you switch it and you roll out this way. Those are really good, but you wanna do it because you said you have a, a, uh, a recurring knee injury, you wanna do it lightweight and on a regular basis. Anybody, any other questions? Right here. Where? In the back? Man. <laughs> you, talk, uh, you talk about things, uh, a lot of things that you see that people should be doing, but what's like the one thing that you encounter in, in the field the most that you're like, you really shouldn't be doing that? Or, that you, that's a long list. list. <laughs> <laughs> that's a long <laughs> list. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, here, here's the thing. If you're talking about something like, say, in a show setting where you know you got a team that's doing their bit or whatever, the one thing that makes me cringe, honestly, I don't tell people not to do it, is what we call a suicide or a kamikaze. Yeah. Uh, has any, does everybody know what that is? Yeah. You, yeah, you go airborne and land slam on your knees. That is insane. That is just waiting for a knee injury. You know what I mean? Yes. Are you raising your hand back there, no. Looney? Yeah, she does it all the time, and she has a knee problem. Oh, I was born with bad knees, okay? Yeah, so her, her name, Looney, kind of ties into that a little bit. You know what I mean? So, we're almost done here, but um, those of you guys that are still in here, what I want to do is I want to give the mic to a couple of the guys in here that I work with just so they can give you a little bit of an insight on their experiences. So you, you, you guys, again, so you guys understand, hey, I'm not just some schmuck off the street. Stop you know what I mean? Away. So I'm one of the old farts that started doing this way back in the day. Uh, who, which one of you guys wants to come up here? Oh, Looney's making her way up there right now. Where is she? She's crawling, but she's making her way up there. What are you doing? That's what's like back for her soul. You got about two seconds. Hey, you're the coach, you pick. Come on, coach. All right, <laughs> I, I vote Mooch. Yeah. Mooch, watch. <laughs> 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 Mooch, you, you, you're on the spot, dude. Everybody's waiting for you. You straight for like 10 people, but you can't do that? <laughs> okay, fine. Why doesn't Cherry do it instead? Just a good disclaimer, this is not something I put them up to. They didn't even know I was going to ask them to do this until just now. Okay? I just want to help give you guys that are in here that want to know more about it a little more insight of what happens, okay? What do you want me to talk about? Just the experience? My experience? Okay. Um, so, DJ's training is really technical. He does a lot of research when he. Um, thinks about exercises and like he specifically kind of almost creates exercises that helps and um, My personal experience. I've started working out Like since I've been sliding and that really helps like when Deed says like do your own training like do it work out You can go like harder faster like everything's a lot better when you're stronger and um, Deed's is training just like He's very detail oriented. Like he makes sure that like you're gonna be safe and you're gonna be safe for everybody else, and it just makes your performance all around better. And I'm totally nervous. And there we go. Yeah, you did. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate it. So I, I, 
I want to get, watch the cord, girl. <laughs> I want to get one more since Looney is hiding somewhere else here. I know she's Where's she at? Oh, right here. Right around. Get up here. Yeah. Get up there. Yeah. 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 Now, one, thing, one thing I do want to say, you guys, like I mentioned before, she's got a recurring knee injury. But the way, the way things have been done, it, we've helped reduce the risk of that again, so she's able to slide longer with less pain. You ready? Uh, there you go. Oh, you. You say what you need to Love say. Love you. Hi, Mom. Hi. Um, yeah, so anything that Dieterman does, sorry, um, he's very intricate with what he does, and it definitely helps out a lot of people who have issues and like reoccurring issues. Um, obviously, I am one of them. Um, my knees are actually out of place. They've always been out of place. They were like shifted. So, yeah, um, I'm actually able to go out and work a full night without actually having issues because he, um, like, he he did a lot to strengthen, and he works on that with me especially of how to strengthen around the muscle to help. So, like, I mean, without Dieterman, I don't think the whole team would be anywhere near where we were. We're at, so yeah. So yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I'm sorry I put you guys on the spot, but I wanted to do that. It, it, again, it helps people understand, you know, what we do and the steps we take to be more proficient and safe at it. I got time for one more. Who wants to come up here? Martin, you want to do it? Who wants to do it? This is the last one, guys, and then we'll call it. Hi. Um, I think, out of everything, I think I'm the prime example of somebody who sees like shows like QM Sliders or the Game Game being like, I don't care what, what it takes, I want to do that. Gets everything together and starts running before learning everything else. So once I get out to the rink with everybody else, they're like, show me what you got. Bro, slow down, <laughs> like hardcore, and ever since like, yeah, I can still do tricks and stuff like that, I always focus on like basics and all that, I worry way more about like stopping, uh, bailing out, all that stuff before even thinking about any spectacular thing. Without this dude telling me to slow down, I'd probably like, done, <clears throat> haunt over, that's it. Thank you, Martin. And he's a young buck. He's like, what, 23? 20, 23? So he's 25. He's a young buck. He's, you know, so. And he's, he's, he said, yeah, I'd be broken. So, um, so you know, on that note, you guys, well, is there any last minute questions that anybody has? Two hands up there, back there. Um, I've known Deeds for many years. I'm sorry, I can't even see you because I'm blind as hell. Use your Oh, shh. Yeah. Okay. Oh, oh shh. <laughs> so, I've known Deans for many years. When I was a haunt monster in 94, when I started, I was one of the big twins. First year doing it, I was there from 94 to 02, 03. Um, started sliding, and what, what Deans is saying, the shit's the truth. Because when I started, I didn't know what I was doing. That man right there is the one that helped me a lot. And, you know, I mean, all of the things that he's saying is the truth. And it helped me be a, a slider for what I did when I was at Scary Farm. And I owe it to him. So thank you for what you taught us and what you're teaching all the new ones. Thank you, Eddie. It's great to be here. Before I wrap this up, you guys, I just want to say thank you for coming and listen, listening to me garble. You're welcome. Um, it, I, I'm grateful for the opportunities that I've been afforded to this point. Um, also, just want to let you guys know it's that it doesn't happen overnight, clearly. I mean, I've just started this business a, few, a handful of years ago, and I'm coming up on my 35th year in the haunt industry. So... If, if, if you want to make something out of your time in the industry like this, you got to stay the course. You got to figure out how to make it work and grow from there. Make sense?
Thanks again for coming, guys. Much appreciated. If you need a business card, you can either come up here or meet me right outside the door. And uh, I'll give you one then. Thank you.